Hey, this is Connor with Congruent X, and today we're going to be talking about how to trigger flows using Canvas apps. All right, I do want to preface this whole conversation on the fact that you should only use flows if you absolutely have to. There's a ton you can do within the Canvas app kind of infrastructure, and triggering a flow to do your work is always going to be slower. So it's it's always best practice to try to do it inside the Canvas app if possible. But there are some things that Flow can do that Canvas apps cannot. For example, table merging, uh, any kind of complex uh, you know data formatting, Canvas apps are not very good at that. I think that's something uh, Flow would be a lot better at. So I've just got a really simple kind of app set up here. Um, you know we got a, like a little ice cream stand set up. And um, the kind of the concept is we need to go and uh, you know get fresh prices. Obviously, this is not something you would use a flow for. There are plenty of data connectors out there, uh, but just for the example, it'd be super easy to show you how this works. So there's there's two ways that you can add a flow to your app. You can either have an existing app that uses the um, Power Apps trigger, and when you go to add it, it will show up, or you can just create it from the Canvas app. So I've already got one created. So what I'm going to do here is let's add a new button just so you can see how this looks. So we're going to go to action and hit power automate. And you can see that because this flow already has the power apps trigger in it, it populates this in this section here. If it does not, it's not going to show up. Um, alternatively, you can create the new flow, but you will have to go back and add it to your app. It's not going to automatically add. And all you have to do is um, click and it will add it to your app. So if I go to my data sources, you can actually see here that this flow has been added as a data source, which is kind of neat. So let's look at the flow. Let's see what's going on with that really quick. So there's two kind of cool things you can do here. Uh, so in some cases, you need to pass information into the flow and pass information out of the flow. So let me show you an example of how you would get information from the Canvas app into the flow. So let's say we add a basic compose here. You're going to notice Ask in Power Apps pops up in the uh, dynamic content. And what that's going to do is that's going to create um, in, in the call, when you actually reference the flow in the Canvas app, there'll be a section where you can put that information. And that's going to be called whatever that action step is. So in this case, it would be called compose, I think one is what it will, oh, compose inputs. Um, and so that's what you would see on the Canvas app side. You would see, you know, uh, Canvas app flow triggering, dot run, and then inside the parentheses, you would actually see compose underscore inputs and whatever uh, you need to pass to the flow. For now, we're going to delete that. We don't need that here. In this case, you know, we're just pulling some prices. So I just have some um, basic little compose actions here that have updated prices. And what I'm doing is I'm responding to the Power App. So this is how once the flows run, we get information to the Canvas app. So here I've named them and I'm, I'm referencing the outputs of the appropriate actions. So one thing to be careful about here is your data types. Okay, so the data type you select here has to match the, the um, input in this section here, okay? So I originally thought, when I first did this, I selected number. I was assuming since the input was a number for the compose that the output would be a number. That's not the case. The output is actually a string. So I was getting an error when I was doing the respond to Power App. So you just, you have to make sure you're using the correct data type. And that's it. If we save this, we can go back to our app. So now we're back in our app and let's check out what I've put in this button. You can kind of ignore, oops. Wait, we want the formatting back, come back. There we go. Sorry, I was trying to expand this. There we go. Okay, you can kind of ignore some of this. Um, so you can ignore this patching stuff down here. That's just what I'm using to update the collection. That's not the focus of this, of this how-to. Um, all I'm doing here is I'm calling for the Canvas app flow triggering. That's the name of the flow, dot run. And since we're not passing anything into the flow, that's why these parentheses are empty. If you had added like before, this is where you would see that. And all I'm doing is since we're looking for something to return from the app, 
we need to throw this in a variable. It could be a global variable or a local. I'm using a local here. And what this is gonna allow us to do is to reference uh, the response from that flow. You can, you can see I'm doing that here. So I've named the variable new price update. And as I go through and patch each of these items, I'm referencing new price update dot blueberry thunder new price update dot chocoholics and that's directly referencing these names here so if we run this you'll see it's pretty quick not bad right okay still would be faster if you did it with from within the app um, but this is a super simple action so it's it's actually pretty snappy I'm, I'm impressed with that and you'll notice you know if if I make changes in real time it's it's really quick to update so I won't speed up the footage here. Check this out. Immediately updates to this new price. So just kind of a quick little overview of how to use flows and canvas apps together. I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching.